interesting one because um, we don't know what the cosine of 15 degrees is or what the sine of 15 degrees is, right? However, there is something we do know. Forget about the 7 for a second. If we have the cosine of 15 degrees and the sine of 15 degrees, what does that give us? If we're just going to think about this as a point, forget about this. If we're just going to think about this as a point, cosine of 15 degrees comma the sine of 15 degrees, right? When we do that, what does that give us? That gives us a point on the unit circle. So if this gives us a point on the unit circle, which we have no idea what that point is, or at least we can figure it out. Actually, we do. Like, remember, half angle, double angle, like some indifference. We figured that out. But anyways, that gives us a point on the unit circle, which has a radius of 1. So if we were to looking at this as a vector, we know that it's magnitude of 1. However, when we have a scalar of 7, we're multiplying it by its magnitude, right? If you guys look at that formula, the 7 on the outside is, yes, it's scalar, but it's also what the magnitude is of this vector. So the magnitude of this vector is 7. We don't want the magnitude to be 7. We want this to be a unit vector, meaning we only want the magnitude to be 1. So therefore, our unit vector is just cosine of 15 degrees, sine of 15 degrees. And that's what the unit vector is so helpful with, guys, is if we know what the unit vector is, 